The Dragon spacecraft carrying the Indian Air Force Group Captain Shubhanshu Shukla and three other astronauts, part of the Axiom space mission, is on track to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and will splash down today by 4 p.m. Shukla, along with fellow astronauts Peggy Whitson, Slavosh Uzansky, Visnewski and uh, Tibor Kapu, boarded SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft Grace yesterday to begin their journey home. Uh, India, Shubhanshu Shukla and his crew undocked from the International Space Station yesterday afternoon, beginning their 22-hour journey back to Earth. This after an 18-day mission aboard the International Space Station, the Dragon Grace spacecraft left the space station Monday afternoon. As, uh, as scheduled, splashdown is expected off the California coast before 4 p.m., more likely at about 3 p.m. is what we are hearing. Now, there is live commentary coming in from Axiom, uh, which is um, the, the private company which is in charge of this mission. Uh, remember Shubhanshu Shukla, the first Indian in space since Rakesh Sharma 41 years ago. Let's listen into what's happening. San Diego, California. So I'm really excited that Southern California gets to be able to see some of these potentially reentry burns of the uh, Dragon spacecraft. I know. I kind of wish we were outside <laughs> right now to be able to see that ourselves. Uh, and sadly, we're not. But. And what you could see in uh, on your screen is mission control here in Hawthorne, California. This is where the Corps, who speaks with the crew, the entire mission all the way through splashdown, um, is in this room along with all the rest of the responsible engineers monitoring uh, this mission. Uh, they monitor the mission from the beginning, from launch, uh, from the day of mm -hmm. liftoff, all the way to splashdown. Yeah, and similarly in Houston, uh, at Axiom headquarters, we have MCCA. Uh, that's Axiom's Certified Mission Control Center. You can see uh, Axiom control, uh, flight controllers sorry, um, working in MCCA around the clock, same as what Jesse mentioned for um, uh, mission control here in Hawthorne. Uh, we have 24-7 coverage in all, of these, in all of these control centers, and that's making sure that you know, while crews up there, we have, we have them supported fully from the start of the mission to the end of the mission. And on a day like today, right, it's a very critical operation. We want to make sure that we're there supporting them as well. So we've got coverage all the way um, uh, from, from their return and into landing. Yeah, a little cheesy, but teamwork makes the dream work. Working in tandem <laughs> with Axiom Space and uh, our SpaceX uh, members here. Exactly right. Um, you know, we, we've got to do it together, and I love that we can work in tandem in a, each mission control and bring the crew home safely. Exactly right. And both of those control centers, like we said, work throughout the mission together. Right On launch day, we have uh, SpaceX's um, mission control center here in Hawthorne working with Axiom's control center in Houston, as well as NASA's control center in Houston at Johnson Space Center and Kennedy. So we have all these launch <laughs> complexes that work together, or sorry, all these control centers that work together, and that doesn't change throughout the course of the mission. It really does exemplify the teamwork that we have to make missions like Axiom 4 happen, or AX4 happen. Um, and all those flight controllers that we see there, they go through a rigorous amount of training to get to those positions, right? To be able to support crew and to be able to understand what crew is going through so that they know exactly what's going on in that mission in that time frame. Yeah, exactly. And we are still waiting for the deorbit burn to, or confirmation of the deorbit burn to start. Um, it should be starting any moment now. Uh, again, we're just waiting for the call out. Uh, we do expect it to last approximately just under 18 minutes um, for this deorbit burn for this specific mission. That's right. And if you're just tuning in, after that deorbit burn, we'll then proceed into a few more dynamic operations following that. Uh, we'll look to be jettisoning the trunk after we do a claw operation. And then from there, we'll move into nose cone deploy and parachute deployment. So, um, or no school enclosure, sorry, and then parachute deployment. So we've got a very full day coming up ahead after this deorbit burn starts. And we did get confirmation that the deorbit burn has begun. Again, it'll last approximately uh, 18 minutes, just under 18 minutes. Now, this deorbit burn is the last time those four forward Draco thrusters will fire. Dragon has not yet entered Earth's atmosphere. This deorbit burn is what will line the vehicle up and put it on its final trajectory to the landing site and off the coast of Florida today. Right now, our crew are using their screens to keep tabs on the burn duration, Draco thrusters firing, and trajectory details like entry angle, spacecraft perigee, and how, how much distance remaining until deorbit burn termination. Dragon is flying itself. It is an autonomous vehicle, so all the crew has to do is stay strapped into their seats and keep tabs on things. And enjoy the ride. <laughs> That's right. Well, to talk a little bit about the AX-4 mission, what it is. The AX-4 mission has really been remarkable in a number of ways from start to finish. 
Um, and each of these missions, like we talked about, demonstrated the amount of teamwork that we work on. But they're also iterations on the process of flying to and living on station. And each of these provide more opportunities to understand how we live and work together in low Earth orbit. And this crew has certainly done just that. Yeah, let's take a moment to properly meet and introduce the crew. Yeah. Our mission commander is Peggy Whitson of the United States. And we actually don't have enough time to cover her entire <laughs> resume because it is incredible. Uh -huh. But to give a few highlights, Peggy, Peggy earned degrees in biology, chemistry, and biochemistry. She was the first female commander of the International Space Station. She has spent over 695 total days in space, during which she logged 60 hours across 10 spacewalks. She is a two-time commander for Axiom Space, having previously served aboard AX2, and she was just inducted as a member of the 2025 Astronaut Hall of Fame class. <laughs> and congratulations, Peggy. <laughs> Pretty <That's> incredible. <laughs> and up next is mission pilot Shubanshu Shukla of India, whose call sign as test pilot is Shooks. Shooks represents the Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO. And he's also an astronaut designate of India's inaugural human spaceflight effort, Gaganyaan, an Indian-built rocket and spacecraft. He was commissioned into the Indian Air Force fighter wing in 2006. He then achieved the rank of group captain in 2024 and has over 2,000 hours of flight experience aboard aircraft, including the Sukhoi-30 MKI, MiG-29, Jaguar, Hawk, and Antonov On-32. Pretty impressive resume. And our third crew member is mission specialist Sławosz Uznański Wisniewski of Poland. He is representing the European Space Agency as a project astronaut coming from the reserve class of 2022, much like Marcus Wand, who served as a mission specialist on AX3. A scientist by trade, Sławosz has earned his master's degree of science with honors from Łódź University of Technology in 2008, master of science from Université de Nanta, and a graduate engineering diploma from Polytech Nanta in the same year. He also spent two years as the engineer in charge of the world-famous Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland beginning in 2018. And rounding out this crew, mission specialist Tibor Kapu of Hungary represents the Hungarian to Orbit Astronaut Program, also known as HUNOR. The program aims to send Hungarian astronauts to the International Space Station for scientific research and technological development as well as to inspire young people. He graduated from the Budapest University of Technology and Economics, earning a degree in mechanical engineering, followed by a master's degree specializing in polymer technologies. In 2023, Tibor emerged as one of four Hungarians selected from a pool of 247 candidates for the Hunor astronaut program. He has invested a notable amount of time in his career focused on space radiation protection while awaiting his acceptance to Hunor. What an incredible crew. Together, they are the crew of AX4, Axiom Space's fourth private astronaut mission to the International Space Station. This mission represents the return of spaceflight for three nations, but it also highlights the growing opportunities for nations and entities around the world to conduct meaningful work in low Earth orbit. And we are, again, if you're just now joining us, the deorbit burn has begun for the crew. Um, and this deorbit burn lasts just under 18 minutes. So we still have about 10 more minutes to go mm -hmm. uh, in this burn. Um, and we are patiently waiting for that burn to conclude. Exactly right. And at the end of that burn, like we mentioned earlier, if you're just now joining us, uh, we'll move into claw separation and trunk jettison before we move into nose cone closure and then parachute deploy. So we've got a few dynamic operations that are coming back to back, um, coming up here shortly. Um, but, you know, Jesse, we were talking a little bit about that crew. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting them uh, a little bit before the mission. And you can really tell that this crew has taken it upon themselves to really make sure that a priority of this mission is outreach. Um, yeah. They really want to ensure that who they are representing, the people that they're representing, are getting an opportunity to come aboard with them. Uh, and understand why they're up there, understand why they're going on missions like AX4, why AX4 is a mission that needs to exist to further everything. And I know that STEM outreach is something that you find pretty fascinating yourself, right? Yes, John, you already know that. <laughs> um, I love outreach. I think it's super important. Um, there's so much technology. All right, in case you've just tuned in, 46 minutes and 37 odd seconds from now is when uh, we expect uh, Group Captain Shubanshu Shukla to splash down uh, in the ocean after what should be a successful mission 
uh, of the uh, Axiom, uh, successful Axiom mission and uh, the Crew Dragon uh, spacecraft itself. Remember the Crew Dragon separated from the International Space Station yesterday. The deorbit burn process has started now, just a little while back. It goes on for a period of less than 18 minutes. The deorbit burn positions the um, spacecraft uh, in a place, uh, in a in a in a place from where uh, the the deorbit process, uh, the reentry process, uh, can actually commence and hopefully go off really well and successfully. In as much as uh, the commentators at Axiom are uh, talking about this as uh, are talking about this as uh, a normal process, uh, I can tell you that it is anything but normal. Uh, it's tense, it's difficult, it's challenging. Um, and uh, there are a lot of things which need to go right. Now, that's the, always been the case from the very beginning. On the left, on the right hand side of your screen, you find uh, the family members at uh, the school in Lucknow where Shubhanshu Shukla studied. Um, they've got, uh, they are looking a bit tense. I don't blame them entirely for that. This process is critical. Uh, a lot needs to go right. Let's go straight across to Pallav Bagla, a science editor who uh, actually understands this better than. Uh, pretty much anybody uh, in the journalist, uh, in the media community worldwide. Pallav, what makes this part of the mission difficult? Well, any dynamic phase of a space mission is the most difficult part. Liftoff is very difficult. So is the return journey. A return journey is when the crew dragon is going to face extremely high temperatures as it enters the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, right now, the deorbit burn is happening, meaning this, the crew dragon, which has been named Grace by the crew, is slowing down. This is the last time the forward thrusters on the crew dragon are going to be fired. And after that, when it has slowed down sufficiently and reaches the right spot, then the re-entry will start. Uh, re-entry is a very tricky process. Uh, the temperatures outside the crew dragon would go up to about 2000 degrees centigrade or Celsius and inside the astronauts have to remain healthy and safe. Uh, SpaceX uses a proprietary heat shield. Uh, we can talk about that later. But, but this deorbit burn is very critical and after the deorbit burn is over, the trunk will be jettisoned and the nose cone will be closed. Nose cone is the place from where the astronauts entered into the crew dragon when the dragon left the International Space Station. So the, after that, when they splash down, it's the side hatch which is opened to exit the astronauts or uh, egress the astronauts from the, interna uh, from the crew dragon. So right now, the deorbit burn is happening, which is slowing down of the crew dragon named Grace. And once that is over, there are many, many critical phases in this whole process. Recall the Crew Dragon, when it left the International Space Station, it was traveling close to 28,000 kilometers per hour. When the splashdown happens, the Grace Dragon is likely to be traveling at about 25 kilometers per hour. So the velocity of the spacecraft has to be reduced thousands of fold. And all of that has to happen in a very dynamic fashion, which is why the astronauts, whom we can see now live in the images, uh, they are all in their astronaut suits. Uh, still, their visors are up. The visors will come down as they come into the reentry phase. But we can see uh, uh, Commander Peggy Whitson and in the foreground and Group Captain Subhanshu Shukla, who's the pilot of this mission, who's, who's, who's in the background. And between the commander and the pilot, this autonomous vehicle is piloted back to Earth. It's a highly automated process. Usually the commander and the pilot should normally have nothing to do with it. But if things go off nominal, then both of them are trained to bring the crew dragon named Grace safely for a splashdown. And the splashdown is likely to happen at 1 minute past 3 p.m. India time but it's going to happen off the coast of San Diego in California. And this is uh, probably for the first time that Axiom is going to be splashing down its spacecraft off the west coast of America. So it's very interesting that they are using a new site for the splashdown. After the splashdown, there are several checks which are done and then the 
the astronauts emerge once the crew dragon is picked up on the ship named MV Shannon and that again is a choreographed gradual process. So okay. it's a long process but the return back for group captain Subhanshu Shukla is happening fast and in the next hour he should be back on Mother Earth or one should say in the Pacific Ocean, Ya Prasant Mahasagar. All right. Let's just uh, cut full frame for a moment to the live video which is coming in from uh, the Crew Dragon uh, spaceship, uh, which has been called Grace uh, by the astronauts. It's been named Grace. And let's turn up the commentary if there is any from Axiom Space. Let alone the pilot and the commander. Um, so our commander Peggy Whitson and our pilot Shubanshu Shukla are maintaining close situational awareness on the vehicle systems there like we saw a minute ago, uh, being able to watch thruster firings, understand where they are um, kind of on their mission home. Yeah, and they are sitting inside of Dragon. They're strapped into their seats, mm -hmm. so they can't really see what's going on on the outside, but they can hear right. um, the, the sound of the thrusters firing. It may sound a little bit different to them than right. here on Earth, um, but it also helps them as they're monitoring, helps them understand what's happening with those sounds mean right. um, so again that they have the full awareness of everything that's happening with the spacecraft exactly now alongside the nasa missions dragon has also flown Ms. several private missions to uh, mr subramaniam is director of the indian institute of astrophysics in bengaluru and ajay lele is deputy director general at the uh, Manohar uh, Parikar institute of defense studies and analysis thank you both very much for being with us anapurni subramaniam why is this part of the flight perhaps uh, the most difficult or, or, or the most challenging, some would suggest even more challenging than the blast off itself. Yeah, this is uh, quite challenging because of the heat generated is enormous. So while well, the re-entry part comes in and before that, the deorbiting, getting the exact velocity down as you know, you from 28,000 to around 28 or 25. So it's a cut down quite a bit and orientation of the spacecraft so that when the docking time you have to orient it and uh, you know make sure that it docks properly similarly at the re-entry time also you have to actually make sure that the uh, orientation is uh, uh, properly done so that the heat uh, when it re-enters the atmosphere where it is heated it can absorb the heat and then a lot of critical things and as you all remember that this is a very critical in terms of safety so safety is at most importance and uh, several steps involved. So we have to make sure that all those steps are properly done, a sequence followed and uh, reach the splashdown without any issue. So it's very, very critical. 